Welcome back to Tech Search News, where we bring you the latest in the world of science and technology. As you are aware, energy efficient storage systems are the stumping block in making the most of our intermittent renewable energy generation. Unless you've had your head buried in the sand, it's a clear problem that needs to be addressed. Which is why so many various battery technologies have been researched and developed in recent years, to the point where some of them are now emerging from the sand. That is exactly what happened in Finland, where the world's first commercial sand battery went live in July. But how does it work? And is it a viable energy storage option? So let's see if we can reach an agreement on this. Before delving into the sand battery, we shall first brush up on thermal energy storage. The technology behind such new invention. Chemical storage isn't the only way to store renewable energy. Instead, renewables can be converted into heat and then stored. In other words, it is a thermal or heat battery. But why should we be concerned with storing zero carbon heat? According to the Energy Information Administration, heating, along with ventilation and cooling, accounted for 46% of total energy demand in US buildings in 2021. However, this power comes from unclean sources. More than half of new American homes still use natural gas for water and space heating. According to a recent study, heating water in our homes and offices as well as fueling low temperature manufacturing processes like brick and food drying account for 10% of US energy related CO2 emissions. You can see how developing more thermal storage units will lessen our reliance on fossil fuels, thereby reducing the impact on climate change of our heat utilization. So how does the technology operate? One of the most common TES solutions today is sensible heat storage. Essentially, you heat a liquid or a solid material by harvesting wind or solar energy during the day or during the summer, when there is plenty of it. Typically, this is accomplished by passing electricity through a heating element and interacting with your storage material. To discharge the heat, simply lower the temperature of the battery by piping in cool air. Your medium of heat transfer can be as simple as water or as complex as molten salt which are typically incorporated with concentrated solar power plants. One of the primary reasons for developing more energy storage solutions is to reduce limitation for renewables such as solar and wind. That is when we have more energy than demand. On a windy day, wind turbines standing still are a good example of this. They've turned them off because there is no demand for energy when they're producing. According to the Australian energy market operator, more than 20% of renewables will be phased out by 2050. That is why TES systems may be useful in getting us out of a jam. Vattenfall, a Swedish utility, will soon fill a 45 meter high, around 150 foot tower in Berlin with water. Fun fact, the volume of water in their tank is enough to fill 350,000 bathtubs. Their battery is located next to a power to heat plant, which uses surplus wind energy from the grid to heat water to just around 100 degrees Celsius or 212 Fahrenheit. Their giant thermos, which is to be expected operational in April 2023, will keep water hot and supply it for up to 13 hours when needed. This sounds promising, but what if we could use dirt to clean up our dirty heat? Polar Night Energy, a Finnish startup, recently added a new toy to the heated sandbox, a 23 foot tall, about 7 meters, steel silo with 100 tons of low grade and a slew of pipes. They are not, however, using this storage medium to construct a sandcastle in the Finnish polar night sky. The startup fine-tuned and upgraded their design after running a 3 megawatt pilot in Tampere to heat up a couple of buildings. In collaboration with Vata Jankowski, Kankampas District Heating Network Operator, a larger battery is already heating local homes, offices, and even a municipal swimming pool serving approximately 10,000 people, and they could do it anywhere in the world where there is a district heating platform. As it is in the New York, San Francisco, Denver, Boston, Philadelphia, and other major US cities, Polar Night Energy claims that their latest battery model can store up to 8 megawatt per hour of energy as heat. Aside from environmental advantages, this storage solution saves the city money. Winter seems to last forever in Finland, and the temperatures can drop as low as those in Alaska, as you might expect. The high demand for heat during the long and cold season translates into high costs. The sand battery, on the other hand, will store clean power during the summer, when it is more available widely, and then repurpose and reuse it during the long winter when there is little sunlight. That is why looking into it is beneficial financially. This will have a greater impact today than ever before. In fact, Following a recent payment dispute in May, 
Russia decided to freeze their gas supply to Finland. So it's easy to see why they'll need a large amount of low-cost heat to keep warm. Local governments are ecstatic about the idea and want to scale it up to 1,000-fold. However, how did Polar Night Energy transform a sand-filled tank into a heat-storing battery? The battery receives excess solar and wind-generated electricity as input. Because it is connected to the power grid, this is then transformed into heat and applied to the sand. To be more specific, the renewables power a resistance heater which heats the air and circulates it around the sand through pipelines. Although it may appear complex, their heat generation is based on resistive heating, which is similar to how familiar appliances such as toasters work. According to the startup, their reservoir is well insulated from the outside environment, minimizing heat losses over time. Their sand-based unit, which can reach temperatures up to 600 degrees Celsius or 1112 Fahrenheit, can store heat for months. When the time comes, simply blow cool air through the pipes inside the hot sand bed. The outcome is hot air that can produce greener steam for industrial processes, heating homes or heating public water. Clearly, using something as safe and simple as sand to store green energy is a good idea. But how does it stack up against other storage technologies? One of the primary advantages of sand-based heat batteries is their simplicity. According to the startup CEO, it's just a standard silo that can be built in any steel factory. As strange as it may sound, they will not need to construct any new infrastructure as they expand. They obviously require additional components such as pipes, fans, pumps, heating elements, and so on. But these are all the usual items that are widely available. The same can be said for their main ingredient, which is sand. This is a significant advantage over traditional chemical batteries which rely on difficult-to-mine metals such as cobalt, lithium, and nickel. Although Polar Night Energy could use any type of sand from any location, the startup prioritizes upcycling construction sand, which reduces waste. That's not the only advantage for the environment. According to a third party, Mission Innovation, based on avoided emissions framework, Polar Night Energy's sand battery could save more than 100 megatons of CO2 per year by 2030. That is nearly twice the CO2 output of New York City in 2020. In addition, Unlike chemical storage, there is no need for an electrolyte solution to move ions around. That's a huge advantage because the electrolyte degrades over time, and lithium-ion batteries have a maximum lifespan of 15 years. Polar Night Energy's sand-filled insulated tank, on the other hand, can withstand high temperatures without losing its heat retention capability, and according to the company, can last for at least 50 years. Given the components and materials used, that claim appears to be very reasonable. Furthermore, while the current sweet spot for lithium-ion battery energy and cost storage is around 6 hours, the sand-based device is ideal for seasonal storage. These devices will not produce green electricity. In theory, you could use stored energy to power a steam turbine, but that will add an extra step, significantly lowering the round-trip efficiency or RTE from 99% to 25%. This is a long way from lithium-ion batteries which only have a 5% power loss during operation. Using renewable heat as is, rather than converting it to electricity, would be more economically and environmentally sustainable. For example, we could use it to substitute natural gas fuel boilers used to heat our buildings. However, this will only make sense in cities where there are infrastructure on a district scale. Furthermore, this environmentally friendly P2H solution could also decarbonize heat-intensive manufacturing processes like steel and cement production. So you might be wondering, how do heat batteries achieve such a high RTE? The Polar Light Energy System uses electric resistance heating, which is completely energy efficient. Sand stores more energy because it can work at temperatures as high as 600 degrees Celsius or 1112 Fahrenheit per unit volume than water, which for obvious reasons cannot exceed 100 degrees Celsius. Polar Night Energy claims that their battery is approximately three times more energy dense than water-based sensible TES. District heating areas such as cities, academic institutions, and industrial sites will benefit the most from the system. Because the infrastructure is already in place, any location with an on-site steam plant could benefit from these sand batteries. Instead of steam, the pipelines will be filled with forced hot air from the sand. But how about the price? While sand is dirt cheap, the technology will require a lot of steel pipes buried inside it, which can raise their costs. Polar Night Energy, on the other hand, believes that scaling up their facility 100 times will only result in a 20 times increase in price. To be more precise, the startup forecasts that once their system reaches a storage capacity of 20 gigawatt hours, it will cost 10 euros, around $10 per kilowatt hour. 
To put this in context when developing the new TS systems, researchers set a cost target of less than $15 per kilowatt hour. Despite the fact that Polar Night Energy estimates are in sync with economists' expectations, there is a caveat. Current storage capacity is only 8 megawatt hours, so their technology will take some time to become competitive. While sand batteries are not a miracle cure for a zero-carbon world, when combined with other thermal and chemical storage solutions, they could play an important role in decarbonizing our power infrastructure. Demand is low, and supply is plentiful. Wind turbines can create a power for storage in one of these sand batteries rather than idle. It's all about selecting the right tool for the right job. There is no silver bullet here, but there are numerous solutions. So are you still undecided? Do you believe the sand battery has a chance of success? That is all we have for today, and if you enjoyed the video, why don't you give us a like and subscribe to Tech Surge News to hear the latest in the world of science and technology. Don't forget to hit the bell button below to get notifications on when we post next. Thank you for staying till the end of the video and hope you enjoyed. Tech Surge News, signing out.